everyone welcome to moments of grace i am so excited today to bring to you what i'll be talking about is that any prayer counts i want you to know that big or small every prayer counts if it's in your heart it's something that you know prayer is speaking to god what god has already said in his word prayer is telling god from the depth of your heart what mean what you know what's important to you is important to god you know god doesn't always see things the way we do he sees us in our spirit so it's never going to be a god is like looking at you and saying okay i desire those fleshy things that's not it he's a spirit and it's in spirit we need to worship him but he created you and so because he created you what you have to say is important to him so every prayer does count all right so we're going to head on over to ephesians 6 18 and i'm going to be reading out of the niv you read out of the translation that you're most comfortable with so let's get started in ephesians 6 18 in the niv reads like this prayer in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests pray in the spirit so now praying in the spirit means um, in the prayer language that you have between you and God. Some of us have it, some of us have not gotten there yet, but you can just simply pray to God. You can start out with a simple prayer or if you um, know how to, um, you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're speaking in the spirit. One of the things and the benefits about that is that God edifies you, um, he fills you. And he edifies you. Another thing that, um, another reason why, it's because it's a communication language between you and God. And the enemy has no clue what's going on and what you guys, what we're talking about to God. It's a private, personal, oops, <laughs> that was huge. It's a personal communication dialogue with our Father. And the enemy has no access to it. And so it's using your prayer language. But if you haven't developed uh, your prayer language or have gotten there yet, it doesn't mean that you can't sit there quietly and just say, Lord, and just be, either speak quietly. I used to pray quietly. And then I started praying out loud. So certain things I would pray quietly, certain things I would pray out loud. Um, obviously the things that you speak out loud, the enemy does hear you. So we need to be more careful because he tries to attack us in those areas but when we speak you know it's 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 in communion you know it's just like we're talking with each other right now we can talk to god i sit in the morning every morning with my coffee and i talk to god i talk to him about my day i talk to him about things that are coming up i talk to him about my school i talk to him about what he wants me to do what his vision is for me as opposed to what my vision is for me um lord is this part of what you want me to do and it, we it's a conversation and it's a closeness that you develop with him that there's no way you're not going to know when he's talking to you believe me when i tell you don't go that way don't go this or go this way i don't want you to go that way you will learn that as you develop your relationship with him at first i thought i could not have that i, I don't have that i don't know what to talk to him about listen these are real things that we have to grow in and we're not born knowing this we have to develop this and so it's not you know, you might not be with somebody else's. Don't ever look at anybody else's walk and what they're doing. And honestly, even if you go and you form an opinion, that's really none of our business, uh, where their walk is. Now, it's nice to know that they have received Christ as Lord and Savior. It's nice to know that if they come to you and they need help, we can pray for them. Um, but our, you're never going to know someone's true relationship with Christ because that's normally done in private. And so just pray. And every prayer counts. Every single prayer counts from when you, what you think might be small may not be small to God. It's never, anything regarding you is never small to God. Okay? Um, and so with that being said, let's move on. Okay, so often we are too analytical with our prayers. And we think that we ought to make them sound fancy or humble. It's totally opposite. The shorter you can get your point across, the better off you'll be. Okay, he doesn't need elaborate prayers or fancy words. 
He doesn't need any of that. Okay? So we can treat prayer like money. We don't want to spend it on the wrong things, and we might not be able to trust our intentions uh, when we pray. But God sees our hearts. And that's why a lot of times, almost, I try to mention this in all the videos, it's not about the outer. It's not about our, I mean, he knows our thoughts, but I can tell you everything, everything is going to concern your heart. What is your heart? You know, what's in your heart? It's a heart issue. If you, if you go to apologize to someone, I use this as an example with my son one day. If you come to somebody and apologize to somebody with gritting teeth, yet you're still talking about them, you, you, you know, your heart is ugly. This is an ugly thing. God hates ugly. Okay. And I'll tell you. So if you, if you come to him and you say, you know, I really, I, I, I know I need to apologize because that's what God tells me to do. Yet your heart is not there. He's going to deal with you on your heart is not there. It's a heart issue. And he's not going to listen to anything that you're saying because you don't mean what you're saying. Remember, what you say and what you do need to be in agreement. So step away until you calm down enough to get your heart right with God because that's more important. And then go and do whatever it is you need to do, whether it's apologize or not. Sometimes, if not all the time, whether you're right or wrong, you need to make it right before God because he's not... He's looking at your heart. It's always going to be the heart he's looking at. So whether you're wrong or right, who cares about that? It's it's really about you uh, coming in agreement with God and saying, you know what, this is wrong. You told me I shouldn't be angry with my brother, and I'm not going to be. And whether I'm right or wrong, I'm going to apologize. I surrender this to you, Lord. Soften my heart toward the situation. Take a few moments. Walk away. And then you can come back. And say, okay, you know what? I don't feel that that anger anymore. You know, that resentment or whatever ill feelings in your heart. I can go up to this person and truly humbly apologize to them and mean it. Okay, because there is a difference. Uh, and I see it all the time. I see it all the time on here. And it's a shame. It really is a shame. A lot of times we see this even with godly people. God wants unity in this church. He wants unity. If you say that you're a Christian, or, you know, or, or of any, you know, the body of Christ, we need to be able to get along. We don't run to the phone. We run to the throne. I believe I said this in my past video. It's not a good thing that he's watching the body of Christ point the finger uh, click off, make phone calls, gossip about other people. God knows what they're doing because I cancel that in the name of Jesus. That's not even godly. And then they say hateful. So we use the word hate. And I'm, I'm, I'm just coming uh, really just slightly off of this only because we're talking about prayer. You cannot approach prayer or approach the throne of God with your heart this way. And the body of Christ needs to get it right for the ones that are just coming to the body of Christ. So if we're doing things uh, wrong, you know, if we're doing, if we're talking about people, if we're calling other people, if we're, instead of, instead of talking about people, we need to be praying for them. Again, the church is a hospital for, for sick people. We, the only reason why we're there okay, and it's important for us to grow and get ourselves strengthened is because we realize we need a savior. If we didn't realize we need a savior, we wouldn't be in church. And you are now in the process and God has to be chipping away at those things, those bad habits that we have in us that need to be changed. So am I saying this, uh, you know, in a negative way? Absolutely not. I'm saying this in a positive way because I care. I love you guys. And so unless we start changing these behaviors, then we're not going to see any fruit bearing. Not at all. Not at all. So if you find yourself not growing, it, that's why. So we need to take a look at these things and say, you know what? This is being said in love because I didn't have to take the time out to say this. Um, at all you could have just figured that out for yourself and you don't want really you don't want God to humble you so it's best that you see that God means what he says in his word he means what he says in his word 
And just by that, some of us just, just do not fear, have that reverential fear of God. And so this brings us back to prayer. Are we hindering our prayers? Um, the reason why we're not getting our prayers answered, is that why? You might want to check that. You know, and the only one who knows that really would be yourself. God loves you and he longs to bless you. He looks every day on who he could bless. You're a child of God. You belong to him. Should the body of Christ be arguing and fighting with themselves aside from what we have to deal with outside of the church? I don't think so. I don't think that at all. I think that we need to be loving other people, okay? Instead of um, talking about other people, we need to be praying for other people and we need to not overlook other people's needs. Um, and you will see how quickly you start to notice how your prayers are being answered. But if they're not being answered now, you might want to rethink it and just examine yourself and see, do I have these bad habits that I need to change and Lord, I need you to help me change them. And that includes me. You know, we're not perfect people just because we're Christians. We're not. But we definitely, we definitely are not called to click off. We're definitely not called to be calling everybody. You don't run to the phone. You run to the throne. And regardless of what other Christians should not be behaving this way. They just should not be behaving this way. They do behave this way, unfortunately. But we cannot reach other lost people so long as we're behaving this way. Just saying. So now. Let me continue on with this. I'm sorry I went off like that. I would not say that if I didn't um, if I didn't think this was something really strong that God hates. He hates. He hates these things. Okay, he want Christians should be getting along with each other and finding different ways to get now. Do on rare occasions you will have times where maybe it is best and fruitful that you stay away from each other. But you treat each other with dignity. God loved each and every one of us. He died for all of us. He didn't say, I didn't like that one or that one or because that one pissed me off or because that one upset me. I, I don't feel the same way. If he, if that were the case, he wouldn't have died for us. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to repentance. So let me just continue here with this. The Lord wants you to talk with him in all occasions and with all kinds of prayer. Sometimes our prayer is a quick cry for help. And sometimes it is an hour long worship session. No matter what kind of prayer, Jesus will always be present to hear you. Let me just go ahead and pray. I don't always know how to pray, how short or how informal I can be, or what things are acceptable to pray for. I thank you for reminding me that it doesn't actually matter. What matters is that I open heart to you at all times and acknowledge that I need you in any and every area of my life. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. <laughs> My son is walking by. So guys, I know I got off there and uh, that issue because I do see it a lot uh, in the body of Christ. And we do need to make those corrections. I know sometimes we just get our skin kind of, you know, um, we don't like it. When, we, when the truth is spoken, our flesh does not like it. But I can tell you this, I would not take the time out to talk to you about these things if I didn't feel that one, that they were important, two, that I cared because I honestly don't have to sit here and say anything. But I wouldn't be benefiting you, and I certainly wouldn't be helping God. So whether I do it for God or you, I'm doing it for both. I do it because I like doing it. And so I pray that you share this video with everyone that you know. Click like, share, and comment uh, below. And support my channel. Make sure and click that um, subscription um, subscribe button because it is free. It doesn't cost you anything, and we are growing in Christ on this channel. So for the next Moments of Grace, I'll see you in the next one. Amen.